Hello, good morning. I am not going to lie. This calendar change date really threw me for a loop. I'm glad I didn't have anything else going on right now. So um, before we get started, let me let me um, myself a little bit better prepared here. And good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, Jared, that is exactly right. Calendars are running. All right, one second here. Let me find the agenda. And from what I remember, yeah, I think it's yeah, whoever's a, on the phone. Uh, there's I think it's the phone. Working on it. Working on it. Working on it. All right, so almost here. So give me about 30 more seconds and I will be ready to go. All right, now I'm ready to share my screen here. Hello, and welcome to the February 19th CNCF CXAF delivery meeting. I'm Brian Miles, and today we're going to talk, uh, we actually have a, a fairly short agenda today, but um, today we're going to talk about KUDO, and is it it's KUDO and um, HAM graduation requirements or questions from Matt Farina. So to get us started, um, Jared, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. All right, um, I'm gonna stop sharing and you can take over. Fantastic, thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. Let me switch over. Is that size okay for everyone? It's nice and big for me. Oh yeah, that's a huge one. <laughs> great, great. We love that. Right, makes it super easy, except on dark screens. Um, all right, so yeah, um, I'd like to chat today about the Kubernetes Universal Declarative Operator, which we have proposed for the uh, CNCF Sandbox inclusion. Um, and just to give you an idea of who's chatting at you today, we have, we have a, a good sized KUDO team, but I'm a senior member of technical staff over at D2IQ. Um, I work on KUDO, I've worked on Kubernetes for a long time. And I'm pretty active in, in Cube Builder and some other Kubernetes work. So fairly active um, there. And so I, I want to start off by telling a little bit of a story um, to, to kind of build up the, the state we are in, in, in Kubernetes native development, building things for Kubernetes, building things on top of Kubernetes. And if you look at what Kubernetes is, it's a you know it's declarative data that's operated on by a series of controllers. And most of us already know that this, so I'm gonna go quick, but it's what I'm doing here is building up a little bit of the kudo view of this, um, this story. Um, so we get into like, what's a controller, right? And a controller is really a, really a reconciliation loop of, I have a, an actual state and a desired state, please advance me towards that state, right? So lately we've had a, a lot of discussion around operators and what, what an operator actually is. And, uh, and you know, we, we had a long thread, we had a long discussion here about that. Um, you know, I like this particular definition, but uh, I, I wanted to pick this one to enhance upon it a little uh, for the perspective of why we, why we ended up creating KUDO. And that is, um, you know, we know what a controller is, and so why not just call them all controllers? Uh, and and, and what, what's this difference in an operator? And it comes down to controllers reconcile state, and they don't care what the underlying workload is. If you think about the controller manager in Kubernetes, it cares that it has a deployment, it doesn't care about what it's deploying, right? Um, and that goes for any resource that, that is maintained by that, con the, that controller manager or the scheduler or anything else. Um, and so controllers plus resources doesn't really make sense in general terms. And one thing I wanna talk about and harp about, cause this is, this is very central to 
the way Kudo looks at the world is it's this idea of application awareness. And it's how, how your application exists with, with itself, with your, your cluster, how it interacts with other applications, and the things that application does and, and how, how the tooling we use infers or, or, or influences how that application operates, right? So, so for example, for application backups right now and restores, we might use something like Valero. Um, or, or, you know, there, there's scaling, there's uh, a couple other things that we need to do. And so what we can say is then is uh, from, the, from the perspective that I'm talking about is an operator's control that's well optimized to the requirements of a given domain. So we set out, okay, great, Jared, you've convinced me, let's operate all the things, right? We want some Postgres, let's write an operator. We want to do some migrations, write an operator. Backups, Kafka topics, we're going to operate everything. We get into this problem where if you start to span this out right now too much, you're writing a lot of operator code for increasingly little returns. And so if, if I say I wanted to, let's you know, turn my Rails app into an operator that had a database with an operator to it, 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 it starts to be, you know, I'm writing more and more lines of operator code for less and less and less domain specific code. Um, and this is kind of a prolific uh, or a proliferation problem that I want to I want to talk about more. But to give a really concrete example here, we look at the Elastic operator, Elasticsearch operator. And Elastic is a massive you know, Java app. It has 65,000 lines of application level code for the operator, right? That's not including dependencies on controller runtime or client go. Uh, or a million other dependencies that you need to interact with the Kubernetes API server. So you get all this set up, right? You've written your operator and you think everything's great. And then Kubernetes 1.17 drops and removes you know, deployments v1 beta 1 or, or something changes, right? And now all of your dependencies are out of date and nothing works with each other. And so it's not just a matter of, you know, you see this and I'm done and you do this and I'm done and you do this and you're done you actually have to continue this change management over time at a very large scale of something that's not your domain. If you're someone just trying to deploy, you know, write something that deploys Elastic on, on Kubernetes in a very Kubernetes native way. And so, you know, this is not very maintainable. And, and, and the problem here comes down to an accessibility problem, right? Writing operators right now requires too much Kubernetes domain expertise. So you need Go developers who knew Kubernetes very idioms very, very well uh, or you need to invest a lot of time into learning those idioms in order to write an operator, right? And operators are potentially useful beyond the category seen today. And I wanna harp on that a little bit later in something we've seen in Kudo that, that actually surprised us about that. And what, what we really should be able to do is enable new pathways for developing native applications on top of Kubernetes that interact well with, that, with, with the uh, host environment that it's in. So this is where I wanna introduce Kudo, the Kubernetes Universal Declarative Operator. Um, it's, it's right now a tool for application sequencing and resource ordering, but it's a lot more than that. It's really about shipping an application with its runbook. Um, and I'm going to open chat just so I can keep track of if there's any questions. No, no it's not right now. Perfect. Um, and really what we're trying to do is promote that application awareness and use application native tooling instead of rewriting MySQL dump in Go for every single operator out there. And it's not really the right tool for operator on the, uh, every operator on the planet. And, and we, there's a very strong distinction we have of, of when you should use these sequencing tools versus another tool. Um, but if you're doing a lot of sequencing that a lot of these operators are doing for complicated applications, it's a great tool for a lot of that. And there's no reason these things can't interoperate and, um, with, with other operators that do smaller, more focused tasks. Um, since the beginning, we've had a very strong community governance and roadmap. And really, Kudo is just Kubernetes. And we, we try to use this a lot because what we're doing, we're, we're talking about is writing operators using CRDs and taking Kubernetes, that, that Kubernetes sort to the hilt by saying everything looks like a Kubernetes object and, and use it as much as possible. So when we, when we go to make decisions, we're, we, we try to ask, how do we do this in a Kubernetes native way with that Kubernetes resource data model? So if we look at the Kudo architecture real quick, uh, right now, we have a set of CRDs and a controller that you operate on that defines an operator, an operator version, and an instance that, that will effectively give you, say, an instance of Kafka for, for a given version. And this all goes out to a repository and an operator. Now, I, when I say repository, I don't mean catalog. Um, you know, we, we don't really have a distribution mechanism at the moment, and we're working on that, and we're working with partners in that space to figure out what that distribution mechanism should be um, in, a, in a way that works well with other CNCF tooling. 
Um, but, but we do at least have a way where it looks like the Helm charts of, of now where you can get an index and, and grab an operator and start using it as of today. Um, and we have a, a kubectl plugin that, that brokers all this. Um, but one goal is, is, like I said, it's just Kubernetes. So we, uh, one, of our, one of our aims is to anything with a, that's done in this plugin should be done, be doable with raw kubectl. So if we look at what Kudo is today, um, we have a stable and generally available uh, version of Kudo that does some declarative sequencing of resources and can run you know, deployments, updates, upgrades, and some custom plans. Uh, so if you want to do a backup or restore, you can, you can do that sort of functionality now. Um, and that base core, core, core functionality is stable while we work on 1.0 features that are really centered around how do we make life easier for both operator developers and end users. And we're shooting for a 1.0 by uh, KubeCon China. So in progress and pl or planning for that right now, we have user-defined commands for the Kudo CLI. So whereas we want everything to be declarative, we recognize that can be hard for end users. And so uh, we, you know, one, one thing is to be able to add in sub-commands into the Kudo CLI so that you can say kubes cuddle Kudo uh, backup my SQL, right? Or add topic to my Kafka instance. Um, under the hood, that's going to be a CRD, but we, we at least offer that imperative shell to make some scripting easier. Um, we're working towards graph-based sequencing of resources. If you can think about Terraform, but apply to Kubernetes CRDs, that's what we're talking about here so that we, we can get out of manual dependency management and allow Kudo to really uh, do a bunch of features for you around sequencing and ordering, as well as drift detection and, and expiring the right areas of you up when you go to update. Um, we'll be doing some automatic sandboxing. Uh, a big one for us is CRD schema management and declarative day two operations. So right now, back in the architecture slide, you saw we had an instance. Um, we're working on replacing that where Kudo will manage the schema for various CRDs on the user's behalf. So instead of creating a topic via the Kafka API, you would create a, a, a broker CRD and have a create update delete plan that then forces everything possible to be declarative and represented inside of Kubernetes. And you can, you can take this pretty far. We wanna see how far we can drive that before it becomes a problem. We've already identified some areas where you need that imperative hatch, right? A restore of your data is really hard to make very, very declarative. Um, but a backup, instead of declaring, I want a backup, Kudo's trying to take the approach of, hey, I want a backup that's no more than 24 hours old, Kudo plan, figure it out. Um, and so that's what we mean by declarative day two operations. Um, drift detection, I kind of I, I kind of uh, mentioned this, but really it's all about running plans in response to events. Um, and then some features around so support, supportability and interoperability with the entire ecosystem. We want Kudo operators to be able to easily work with other operators, whether or not they're written in Kudo or QBuilder directly or, or operator SDK or whatever else. So just a quick drop into the, our community so far. Um, we have a lot of members in Slack. We have a lot of stars. We have a lot of contributors. Everything we do is out in the open, open governance. And um, we, we followed a cap process since the beginning for introducing all of our enhancements. Um, and we were the first operator focused tool on the Kubernetes podcast. Um, we found out that someone back in a few months ago put us as the, the top recommended tool on the Kubernetes operator docs, which was a, a pretty cool thing to discover. Um, we have an upcoming workshop. We're, we're talking about all over the place. And we have people who are not us even writing blog posts about this. So we've started a flywheel effect. We, we have people interested. Um, and, and we have people interested not in just writing their databases, but also orchestrating microservices, large, large microservice applications using Kudo. And so that's, that's what, I, what I was talking about earlier when I said, you know, people are wanting to do this for just beyond uh, you know, run my, my Postgres, right? People are, are looking at this for their Rails app or for, for their other tooling as well and, and building out a uh, cohesive ecosystem. So we have a bunch of operators so far, um, both maintained internally and with others. And we have a bunch of users in the community or contributors in the community. Um, you know, th these, these, a lot of these companies have either been re uh, contributed directly or have, uh, have put in uh, feedback on CAPTS, especially around our support bundle process and others. And we have a lot more users, um, but I wasn't able to get clearance to mention them here in time. Um, but they're in our community, they're active, they're asking questions and, and using that tool to, to build out both data operators and microservice-based operators internally. So looking at Kudo and the CNCF ecosystem, there's a bunch of things that we wanna bring 
bring out and 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 there, there's reason there's value we see in in some of the stuff that we're working on um, with other people in the CNCF and for the community at large. Um, one thing we're working on is the Kubernetes operator interface and what that is and I'm going to post all these slides too. Um, I wanted to save some time for discussion but really what we're talking about is a specification that enables compositions of operators and other tools so that we can start building ecosystems right and building tooling that consumes that so that end users don't have to learn a new tool for every single operator or a new way of interacting with every single operator and operators don't have to manually interact with each other if you have a kafka operator and you want to get a connection string out of a zookeeper operator that's what koi is attempting to solve here um, if you if you want to write a cli tool or if you want to write a ui or dashboard that that actually consumes the behaviors of an operator this operator can do a backup or restore that's what koi is intended to solve um, and it's, it's, it's really important to note that this is really supposed to be not be competitive, but it's really supposed to be com compatible with other specifications that aren't really covering this particular use case. Um, another one that we've, we've talked to a lot of people about and we have a lot of users of is, uh, is Cuddle, which is our Kubernetes test tool. And it's a declarative framework for writing conformance and EDA tests for Kubernetes resources. It's based on assertions. We have a lot of companies using it to test really anything on Kubernetes, uh, but not just operators and not just Kudo. Um, and for us, it, we, we, the reason we developed this was to enable like conformance and certification matrices of various distributions and various Kubernetes versions and different operators so that you can quickly at a glance see that, that this operator works on these versions of Kubernetes and not these versions of Kubernetes and um, also determine how, how mature, how many, how many different uh, you know, features on a maturity model that these operators supply. Um, right now, the, the best way to use that is in the, the, as a subcommand in kubectl kudo, but we just moved it out into its own cuddle repo. Um, you can totally say kubectl cuddle if you really want to, that's what I do. Um, but it, it will be, we're working towards a first release of the, of the standalone cuddle as a tool. Um, we, have a, we have a lot of community stuff, we're working on the coin cuddle site. I think they're just redirects for now to the repos or they're, they're not, but in the coming days, those two sites will be up. Um, Kudo.dev is up. We have Kudo on the Kubernetes Slack. We have a GitHub. And you know, there, there's a lot of reasons that, that we think we can bring a lot of value into the CNCF sandbox and, and, and running this experiment out in the open. Um, and so what we really want to do is, is enable some really public experimentation with operators, but also conformance and certification of, of workloads on top of Kubernetes. Um, we really want to align that application delivery with other CNCF projects and work with Helm and others that get in to establish standards for distribution of, 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 um, of workloads on Kubernetes. Uh, we, we really want to provide a really lightweight mechanism and programming model for users to develop these Kubernetes native applications and operators. Like I said, Kudo is not the all, end all be all tool, but we, we think there's, there's a room here for a lightweight tool that makes this a lot more accessible to people who aren't Kubernetes domain experts. Um, and then we, what we really want to bring this, both our tooling and our standards and advance that to incubating and graduate it as the project evolves. Um, or, or get some of these integrated into Kubernetes directly, uh, depending on that tool. Coddle might be a great thing for SIG testing to, to eventually, uh, you know, have, have some involvement there. But, but we want to experiment that under the CNCF sandbox, which is, you know, it, it was mentioned there that a lot of things going into Kubernetes incubating is appropriate for CNCF sandbox. Um, and then we, we want to solve some IP concerns that we've had with some potential contributors who are really interested in these problems as well. Uh, but, but for what reasons, whatever reason, uh, they're either not comfortable or their employer won't let them work on non-CNCF projects. And so we want, we want to lower the barriers of entry there uh, for a lot of people who we, who we know are really interested in this problem. Um, so, you know, if we look at what Kudo is all about, it's really about enabling teams to build operators in a very accessible and maintainable way. And we think the inclusion in the CNCF sandbox grows that mission. Um, and with that, I'm Jared Dillon. We have a few other members of the team here. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. All right. Thank you, Jared. Um, so did you say where we can go see more about this or if you have any videos yeah, or any of that? I can reshare the screen. Kudo.dev mm -hmm. is the, a good entry point with getting started in documentation. It'll lead you into the repo. And uh, this week we'll have the Koi and Cuddle sites up. We've just been extracting that out of Kudo. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Jared. All right, um, next up on our agenda um, is, let's see here. 
Oh, I know who it is. It's it's Matt Farina. Well, well, hold on. Were there any other questions with yes. Kudo? Or yeah, I, I was actually you, kind of curious about this. Since we're going through project processes, um, and, and my question is also about project processes, I was curious, now that Kudo's given their presentation, like what's next in the processes? Where do they go next? What should sandbox processes expect next? What's going on here? All right, so to answer that question, um, this is something that we are working out with TOC right now. As a matter of fact, I'm actually having a, literally right this second, having a side conversation with the TOC about nailing this all down. But in, at a high level, what's going to happen is um, for projects that are coming, and Amy as well, um, but projects are coming into, um, coming into CNCF, whether it be incubation or sandbox, uh, we've created a, a questionnaire that needs to be filled out. And it's more on the it's more on the project maintainer um, to get this out, and then depending on whether it's a sandbox or it is an incubation project, then we work with Amy uh, to get this in front of the TOC, and they do what they do. So that's what that's what we're trying to. So I can out. give more color here yes, as well. Um, <laughs> it's fine. If you invoke me and I'm here. So hello. Um, part of what also happens with this is being able to get like the, uh, the review from the SIG and being able to have sign up from the SIG saying, yes, we recommend this or no, here's some other things that we think might be a better fit. Um, and that part is kind of the thing that I think we're you know, working through right now is like, what happens if it's not a fit? Um, but in the case of like, hey, Argo, Argo is ready to be able to go through over to TOC. So being able to say, hey, we've made the recommendation, TOC, now please review based on our recommendations and what we've gone through. Does that help, Matt? Uh, and Chris Jared, is also does it help? Well. Yeah, I, I, think, I think so. Um, I, I, I also saw Chris's reply in here that um, about say after we're making a recommendation or report on kudos. So I guess uh, Brian, Harry, uh, I don't say Lois, but uh, whatever I can do to, to help facilitate that, that and, and help provide as much information as you need. Um, I'd love to chat about those next steps. Uh, so if I understand the next steps is there's the, uh, um, the due diligence template and they need to do a pull request somewhere with it. Is that right? So I'm trying to look at the process up here. That's um, separate. Um, that's, that, yeah, that's, that is, yeah, that is we, something that you're looking for for graduations between um, moving from sandbox to incubation and that sort of thing. Due diligence would be something <coughs> required for that and not necessarily in this initial presentation here. So what's the next step that, say, Jared needs to do? Or is it not a next step for him? It's a next step for somebody else on this call. So what, we, what we'll do um, between Harry or I, we will get, um, we will actually, we, we create this uh, document with a questionnaire in it, and we will share it with Harry and his group. And you fill that out. And, and that's what we use as um, part of our, our due diligence process of, of whether to make a yay or nay decision on that. Does that does that look the same? Does that does that look the same as the incubating due diligence at the SIG level, or is that a um, different for a sandbox project? You know what? I will need to figure out what the answer for that one is. Yeah. It is, in Matt. This is Diane Mueller. Thank you for for asking all these questions because it is very confusing. Um, and you know, I know we went for in incubation status with the operator framework, and now it, it feels a little bit like we're in limbo. Um, so I, I don't really know, and, and I ought to know, but I'm, I'm asking again what the status is. is. Is it now to go to the TOC and we need to request, do we, like the, the folks behind the operator framework, need to make the request of the TOC to, to review and vote on this? Or it's very unclear. To me, so, at least. So, Diane, um, for your particular case, I'm I'm actually going to follow up. I, I've already followed up with Amy today about that. We're going to get you some new information as soon as I get it. So, Diane, I, I think one of the pieces of context that might help here is not only is there mostly a new TOC in place or half of a new TOC in place, but there's also new processes in place. 
and you're kind of going over the cusp of it. That's the reason I have questions for Helm here, and I've had so many questions about uh, Kudo, because there's just so many changes, and so much of this is new, and reading the docs that they've got is, is a little confusing. And we're talking new process, and you're like right over this hump of you came in during the old process, you've got it, but they had to stop because the TOC couldn't vote, now the new TOC's in, what process? I'm sure there's a lot of confusion there. Um, yeah, so no, and, you'll and probably I, I need would, to hark on it. Yeah, and we've, we've been in limbo now for almost four months, and this is, it's not a comfortable place to be, um, and we keep trying to go through whatever hoop um, everybody puts in front of us and get all the information out. And Gerard, this is, you know, listen and learn. Um, and there's nothing saying that this process isn't going to change again. So, um, you know, with the new TOC. So, you know, my druthers is I would really just like to get to a vote at the TOC um, as soon as possible, um, preferably before KubeCon EU, so that we could deal with it there and have some, you know, recruitment for new bodies and external parties to work and collaborate like Jared and Matt and everybody else at that event. So, you know, this will be the second KubeCon opportunity we've missed to bring everybody <laughs> together. I, I feel your pain on some of this. Um, so I guess actually, the one thing that I would suggest is you can still recruit bodies. You don't have to be in the CNCF in order to recruit more people. That's, that's the one hold that I, I can say, but yeah, you, you have a great point. Uh, we, and we will. I mean, I've got a meeting room set up and everything else, but it's just, this is getting to be redonkulous as the word I use the most. Um, and and uh, Chris, I know you're on the call and Brian and Amy, I know you're there, but it's like, if we could just get it on the agenda. I don't care what we have to do to educate the 11 new members of the TOC, we'll do it. We just need to get this done. No, I very much appreciate that. We are having conversations to be able to help move all of this forward. And to Matt's point, um, you, he's correct. You guys are kind of in that weird edge case between here's process and here's where new TOC comes in. But um, thank you for bringing it up. I will take a look at this with Brian and with Chris today. And Matt, I guess with that, I'll pass back to you. You're muted. I, I saw that. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad it tells you. It always reminds you when you start talking. And, um, but I guess the thing that I would ask is that as you go through the things that the chairs have to do in the SIG, um, please keep those of us who are on the projects in the loop regularly. If we have to go weeks without knowing what's going on, it just eats at us and we feel bothered and I know it's extra work for you um, but otherwise it creates problems for us and I'm sure the folks on Kudo can can say they've gone through this because they first pitched it like six months or seven months ago now and changing processes and problems have created problems there um, we just heard about the operator framework we'd really love to know what's going on when things are happening so at least we feel like we're not forgotten and it forces you to not forget us and keep going. So that's the thing I would ask. Um, but with now with that, uh, what I wanted to do is I'm looking at this new process and Helm wants to go for graduation. We've had all the I's dotted and T's crossed for some time. Um, everything we're doing now mostly goes above and beyond the graduation requirements. And so, uh, or, or just filling out the right things. Like you wanna know who the users are in a, in a markdown file in a special format, right? You, you've got this place where you need to do stuff. We're like, okay, so we've gotta take our users and get them documented, some of them anyway, get them documented over here. So my question is, is now things have very much changed in the new process. And I know there's a due diligence form we've gotta go through and fill out. Most of that was supposed to be done for incubation, but we went in for incubation quite some time ago. So we don't have a due diligence form like that. and so I'm wondering, what does the process look like now? We'll go, we'll work out the due diligence, we'll get with our TOC sponsor who is still on the TOC, and we'll start working through some of these things. But what else do we need to do? Do we need to come here and give a presentation, maybe in two weeks, that walks through the due diligence? Do we just need to do a pull request to the TOC repo? What's the, what's, what are the steps we need here? So I cannot give you the answer right now, but I am meeting with uh, the TOC next Wednesday at this time. And, and, and yeah, it's not the best answer, but it's what we have and this is what I will be bringing up and what we need to figure out. 
Okay, so we're Actually, stuck even in better. We, we've got a meeting tomorrow about um, being able to outline all of this. That's roughly this time tomorrow. In fact, exactly 24 hours from here. Um, so I appreciate that you're also feeling that you're stuck in limbo about this, but um, can you tell me where you are on the due diligence doc? Well, since I just learned that we need to do it yesterday and I'm prepping for a webinar to give next Tuesday, I have not started it yet. Okay. The plan is to start it um, either this afternoon or more likely tomorrow morning. We know most of the things. It's just a matter of going and filling it out. So probably sometime tomorrow is when I will start work on it. Okay. So I can probably get started on it. And then if after the meeting in this time slot, you could give me some direction, I'd appreciate it. Yes. Um, yeah, come find me on Slack or being able to drop me an email and that sort of thing and I'll let you know if we have clarity around if you need to be able to present towards the app delivery group with that due diligence docs or if it needs to be able to go to TOC directly. What, what time does that meeting end tomorrow? 9 so a.m. Can... 9 a.m. Pacific. Pacific. Okay. I don't want to bug you before then and so that's why I asked. I mean, you can. I just won't have any good answers for you. But I appreciate this and I appreciate yeah. that, like, you know, there's a lot of confusion here. So um, I will put this on our agenda to make sure that we get clarity around this. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Matt, is there anything else? No, that was it. All right. So going back to our agenda. Well, actually it looks, nope, actually there's a, another item just popped up on here um, from Xander. Hi, yeah, I am another supplicant to the uh, process of <laughs> moving through this, this uh, gauntlet. And uh, I'm here representing some of the core team of Cloudinator Build Packs project, basically just checking in. Um, it sounds like we did a PS, we did a PR um, in January, and um, I'm reading the comments on the PR that are saying we need to do the same due diligence template. Um, I have, a, I guess, a couple clarifying questions. My, I had used the template as a means of kind of figuring out what information we might need in the PR, but and and when I read this template, it it sort of seems like it's for people who are leading, or I guess the quote is leading or contributing to due diligence. Should we be filling it out ourselves or does someone else have to fill it about, out about our project? No, you would fill it out yourself. Okay, so we do our own due diligence, fill out all the items that seem to apply to us and then attach it as part of the pull request? Um, I guess if you fill it out in Google Docs, you can put the link there. Okay, but then that information provides whoever's gonna do further due diligence at least enough pointers. So that's yes. how, we, how we would move forward. Okay, cool. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, but if you need anything, um, feel free to reach out and don't wait to this meeting. Okay. Uh, reach out in CNCF app del delivery Slack. Um, there or? On the app? PR. Yeah, PR. <laughs> cool. um, cool. There's a mailing there. list. There's a mailing list. Um, yeah, uh, just reach out, Sander, and we'll make it happen. Okay, sounds good. All right, that actually, all right, I'll, I'll actually put the call out. Are there any more projects that are, I, I don't think there are anymore. There would be Framework and then the Helm, and then Argo is, is ready to move to TOC and Cloud Native Build Packs. Uh, if there are any more, uh, let us know whether it's mailing list or, 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 or Slack. And with that, I don't think there's anything else on our agenda today. So we can end early. Oh, wait, um, what's the recommended way of, um, from the question from the chat is, what's the recommended way of distributing and packaging operators built by Kudo? Um, Jared, I will let you take that, um, but, um, yeah, sure. So right now uh, we have a, a repository model and actually Ken is here and can, can talk more to that um, in the Kudo channel as well. But basically right now you can stand up your own Kudo repository and package and, and, and put your operators into, into that repository. Uh, the reason we haven't come up with a more centralized, we, we, we do have like our, our stable 
uh, repository that's your default public one. Um, and getting into that is just a matter of PRing into our operators repo, the, the operator, and then uh, cutting a version of it and doing a release. Um, the reason we don't have a more formal way of doing that right now is given some discussions we had at, at KubeCon uh, with, with a few other teams, uh, you know, Helm and, uh, and, and, and Operator Framework, we wanted to wait and see how, how Kudo could fit from a distribution or a um, wider distribution method, how it could fit into those frameworks, right? And, and, and participate there rather than going and creating like a fourth Kudo hub, right? So repository model for now, happy to talk about it in the, um, in the Kudo channel and walk you through that. We have a lot of docs on it. Um, would be your your way right now for distrib distribution and packaging. But more TBD on that. All right, thank you. Any more questions? All right, well with that, um, just one more update. Uh, I was talking last week about the um, work group for um, Aircapt. That meeting invite is going, now that I know where to send it, will be coming out very shortly. And um, it's going to be next Tuesday uh, around this time. So um, we'll meet then, decide if that's a great time, and, um, and then we'll get a cadence on the calendar. Sound good? All right. Well, with that, um, thank you, everyone. And um, I'll be talking to some of you all soon, and we'll be doing all the follow-ups. And until that time, um, until next meeting, talk to you later.